Coming up, a family finds a sense of peace as a murder trial comes to an end. Republicans gather in Adel for a debate. And Stephanie Salone has our weather, while Olivia Steen gives us a rundown on local sports. Your News Valdosta starts right now. Welcome to News Valdosta, I'm Shelby Mitchell. And I'm Bridget Muckle. After a second autopsy was performed on Kendrick Johnson's body, newspapers were found inside of the body instead of his organs. Now a Georgia court has ruled that the funeral home that prepared Johnson's body did not break any state laws by stuffing the body with newspapers. Some supporters of the Johnson family felt that the body was mishandled by the funeral home where Johnson's organs went after the intentional autopsy conducted by the state is still unknown. A year ago, freshman student Jasmine Benjamin was murdered in a residence hall. On Friday, a Lowndes County jury found Darian Mayhew guilty of her death. Benjamin attended Valdosta State University and was found dead November 18, 2012 in a dormitory study room. Prosecutors say Mayhew was upset because Benjamin broke up with him. After a warrant was issued for Mayhew's arrest, he quickly turned himself in. Now he faces life in prison. Recently, a woman was held victim as a part of an armed robbery and kidnapping. News Valdosta's Ryan Saylor has more. Today, I'll be reporting on police reports that was released by the Valdosta Police Department. 23-year-old Sharon Waller was kidnapped at gunpoint on Monday, January 13th, 2014 by Kevin Williams. Williams forced Sharon into her vehicle and, at, and made her drive all the way down to Jasper, Florida. Once they made it to Jasper, Florida, he forced Williams out of her vehicle and continued driving to an unknown location. Afterwards, Sharon quickly contacted the local authorities who contacted the Valdosta Police Department. In response, the Valdosta Police Department sent down a detective from the Valdosta Police Persons Unit to Jasper, Florida in order to interview Sharon so then they could ID the vehicle and the person who was driving it. In Jacksonville, Florida, Williams was arrested at a routine traffic stop. He was convicted of four crimes including aggravated assault, armed robbery, possession of a weapon during the crime, and kidnapping. From News Valdosta, this is Ryan Saylor. Around 10 o'clock on Friday night, a fire occurred at the Langdale Saw Mill on Madison Highway. Firefighters remained on location to make sure the fire was extinguished completely. Police believe the fire was due to electrical issues within the building. The amount of damage done is still unknown. The Center for the American Progress Action Fund released a report yesterday listing Georgia counties with the worst voting access. Counties listed were Dooley, Telfair, and Lowndes. The report identifies Georgia's best and worst performers in voter turnout, overall voter registration rate, rate of registered voters purged from voting rolls, provisional ballots cast, and absentee ballots rejected. Lowndes County had the highest rate of provisional ballots cast in the state, which was 10 times higher than the state average. By comparing voter access and experience with these reports, officials can determine the best practices for ensuring that citizens have an equal opportunity to participate in the voting process. Gerald Griffin is currently being held at the Lowndes County Jail in connection to a shooting that occurred on North Valdosta Road earlier this month. The victim suffered shots to the leg and the backside. Investigators are still searching for a clear motive for this attack. Once information is found, additional charges may be sought out for Griffin and others involved. Debates were held in Adel for U.S. Senator this past Saturday. Potential candidates for the state of Georgia gave their views on state issues as well as possible solutions for the next term. This year's primaries will take place in May. Today, the city of Valdosta will begin to install new sidewalks on North Oak Street. The sidewalks will begin at Alden Avenue and run south to Georgia Avenue. 
A lane shift will be added through the duration of this project and drivers will be given proper signs to maneuver around the construction safely. With decent weather, the project will be completed by the end of March 2014. When we come back, a mother takes a stand for the teachers of Georgia. And Remerton breaks ground for a new sexual assault center. We'll have these stories and more when we return. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Welcome back to News Valdosta. Ashley Klein is the founder of the organization Teachers Rally Against Georgia Insurance Charges. In a matter of two weeks, the group managed to gain over 9,000 members. This group was created to bring state employees together to create awareness, provide pertinent health care information, and start a momentum for change. Their main complaint is that they no longer have the option of health maintenance organization in favor of a, in favor of a type of co-insurance where the patient pays along with the insurance. South Georgia Medical Center received the Josh Naham Special Award for Achievement in Infection Prevention and Control category from Partnership for Health and Accountability. The award is a part of the annual PHA Quality and Patient Safety Award program. The program is offered in collaboration with Kimberly Clark and the Safe Care Campaign. It recognizes healthcare organizations for achievement in implementing evidence-based processes and best practices in reducing the risk of adverse outcomes and improving patient safety and quality. Since 1949, the Lymphoma and Leukemia Society has been dedicated to curing leukemia, lymphoma, and myeloma. The Student Council at Lowndes High School is collecting old cell phones to donate to the Society to help raise funds for cancer research. Participants can drop off their phones in the Media Center or Room J128. This fundraiser will run until Friday. Make sure to bundle up. It is still flu season in South Georgia. There have been three flu-related deaths reported in South Georgia since the start of the new year, totaling 19 deaths this flu season. Vaccinations are highly recommended, as well as practicing good hygiene in order to remain healthy. A new facility will be built in Remerton for victims of rape and sexual assault. The current building has limited resources. A new center will soon be available at the new Remerton location. Board members of the Haven officially broke ground for the start of construction last Friday. The new facility is set to be completed in the next four to five months. Up next on News Valdosta, Stephanie Salone has a look at our weather. And Olivia Steen will give us the best in sports. Stay with us. In 1977, in Johannesburg, South Africa, an eight-year-old boy picked up the game of golf from his father. By the age of nine, he was already out playing him. The odds of this gentle lad winning the Junior World Golf Championships at the age of 14? One in 16 million. The odds of that same boy then making it to the US and European Pro Golf Tours? One in seven million. The odds of the Big Easy winning the Open Championship once and the US Open Championship twice? One in 780 million. The odds of this professional golfer having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 110. Ernie Else encourages you to learn the signs of autism at autismspeaks.org. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference.
Welcome back to News Valdosta. What's going on with this weather? First it's nice and warm, then it's cold, then it's warm again. Let's ask our weather anchor, Stephanie Salone. What's up, Stephanie? Thanks, ladies. The high today is only about 64 degrees. It looks like winter started to finally creep up on us. It will be partly cloudy with a bit of wind. There is no chance of rain today. The overnight low tonight is 26 degrees, so you may need a heavy jacket if you're out on a midnight stroll. There is no chance of rain tonight, but expect some chilly wind coming through tonight. Tomorrow, you may need a light jacket all day. Expect temperatures to be back down to 50 degrees with a low of 30 degrees. Expect to see a lot more of these cold days coming up. The UV index will be moderate at a 4. Remember the sun's rays are most damaging in the early part of the afternoon. Sunrise will be just before 7 a.m. The pollen index today will be at a low. However, it may still be a wise idea to keep your favorite allergy medication handy. The predominant pollen is juniper. That's all for your weather. Back to you ladies at the news desk. Coming up next, Olivia Steen will give us a look at local sports and what we have to look forward to this weekend. Stay with us. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all working with United Way for a million little reasons, the kids of our communities, to ensure their academic success all the way to graduation day. You see, it takes about 12 years to create a graduate, but it takes the same time to create a dropout. And the difference between a kid becoming one or the other could be a professional athlete or it could be you. Studies showed the earlier we get to kids, the better their chances. So become a United Way volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor, and make a difference in the life of a child, for the life of that child. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Join your favorite NFL players. Take the pledge. Go to unitedway.org. I got my MBA online at VSU. As a working mom who travels on business, I needed an MBA program that fit my schedule and allowed me to balance both my work and home life. VSU's Web MBA was perfect. I was able to spend time with my family in the evenings and then complete my assignments. My MBA is one of my greatest accomplishments. It was hard work, but I would do it again in a heartbeat. Don't wait. Start your MBA today. Welcome back. Let's see what Olivia Steen has for us in sports. Olivia? Thank you, ladies. Soccer season is approaching sooner than you think. The Vadasta High Wildcats will conduct soccer tryouts this afternoon for their boys and girls teams. Students will need to have physicals on file with Coach Dottie or Coach Parton. Practices are scheduled to start today. Basketball season has begun and the Wildcats have made their appearance known. They have started off the season well with their 12-6 record, although they were defeated by the Brunswick and Camden County. Their last, two games, their last two games, the Wildcats are determined to come out strong against the Colquitt County Packers. The game will be tonight at Colquitt County High at 6 o'clock. The Valdosta State Blazers have had a tough time on the road this weekend, falling 98-84 to in basketball to Shorter University in, Ro in Rome's Winthrop King Center. The Blazers got off to a blazing start, taking a 15-8 lead in the first few minutes of play. David Murray and Blake Justice dropped in three three-pointers to help the Blazers take the lead. Jeremy McKay hit a pair of free throws to put the Blazers at 73-71, but that happened with a little more than nine minutes left, and a lot happened in that nine minutes. Schroeder came back with three free throws, a layup, three more free throws, and a three-pointer that the Blazers couldn't stop. The Schroeder Hawks finally took their first lead with about 13 and a half minutes left in the game, coming from behind 50 to 48 at halftime. But the Blazers will have another shot at winning on Thursday when they host Delta State University. Thanks, Olivia. When we come back, groups of citizens honor Martin Luther King. And parents gear up for the school's spring semester, spring semester's open house. Stay tuned.
Clean kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. When every moment matters and a hand reaches out, when someone gives blood and a life is saved, that moment when heartbreak turns to hope, you're there through the American Red Cross. Every day, the Red Cross responds to nearly 200 neighborhood emergencies, and your support makes it possible. Use this moment to join us today. Visit redcross.org. Welcome back. Did you know that car seats reduce fatal injuries for infants by 71%? A week ago, the Lowndes County Health Department was given the 2014 car seat grant by the Georgia Department of Public Health. The Valdosta Police and Fire Department will work together in Lowndes County to provide car seats to those less fortunate. They will also show the citizens how to install the car seats properly. Over 350 citizens honor Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. at St. Paul's AME Church on South Ashley Street Monday afternoon. Speeches and hymns took place as King's legacy was honored and remembered. King would have been 85 years old this year. With New Year's resolutions still in full swing, the YMCA's Team Lean 2014 begins Saturday morning at the YMCA. This is Team Lean's fifth year in action. Team Lean is a 10-week program that promotes healthy eating and exercise. Throughout the competition, there are weigh-ins and other competitions which yield prizes for the top performers. Saturday was the beginning, however, the Team Lean competition is still accepting new members. The gallery at Valdosta State's Fine Arts Center is hosting a national competition of mixed media art this week. News reporter Courtney Perry has more. Valdosta's National All Media Jury Competitions Exhibition Dates are starting up tomorrow night from 7 to 8.30. Hopeful artists from different parts of the U.S. have entered more than 160 pieces of art for a chance to win $1,500 in awards, but only 59 were selected to be in the gallery. The gallery is compiled of many various artworks from colored pencil drawings to digital photography. Carolyn Hinn, Chairwoman of the Department of Art at Florida State University is the judge for this annual competition. Available times for attending are 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. during weekdays and 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Fridays. The last day to attend the exhibition is February 8th, but the Fine Arts Gallery page on Facebook is always available for viewing. Contact Julie Bolin, Gallery Director, for more information. For VSU TV, I'm Courtney Perry. Valdosta High School will hold its spring semester open house tonight at 6.30. There will be a brief meeting in the Performing Arts Center and then parents will be able to walk through the school. This open house gives parents the opportunity to meet with teachers, learn what their children will need for the year, and give them a clear understanding of the curriculum being taught. The sign up for driver's education at Lowndes County High School is quickly coming to an end. Registration ends this Friday. Classes will be held on the weekends from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. starting January 25th. All class times and six hours of driving needs to be completed in order to complete the certification. The whole class should take only six or seven days to finish. For more information, visit the school's website. Come on out and spice things up with the Valdosta Tango Society. Mr. Angel Montero from Atlanta Tango will be giving free lessons for Argentine Tango Dance. Their first meeting is today at Motion's Dance Studio. They say no experience or partner is needed for these lessons. For more information on dates and times, visit the Valdosta Tango Society on Facebook. Thanks for watching News Valdosta. I'm Bridget Muckle. And I'm Shelby Mitchell. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.